What's up, folks? We're back with more diplomacy ramblings. This time we're doing a gunboat game as England. Gunboat means no communication, for those who don't know. I'll start off by describing English opening moves and my general strategy when playing England, and then we'll get into the year-by-year. -year. In this game, I get my ass pinned to the wall, and uh, you'll get to see whether I wiggle myself out of it, so look forward to that, seeing a few invasions of English soil. Without further ado, here we go. So England's definitely in the bottom three of countries that I prefer to play as, along with Italy and Turkey. I kind of think of England as just kind of like a nerfed down France, if you're thinking in terms of soloing. Because while you're closer to the stuff you need to take in Scandinavia and St. Petersburg, as France, if you're able to outfleet Russia, which you should be able to do, you're not going to have a problem taking Scandinavia anyway. And England is just further than Tunis, which you really need for a solo. And having to convoy armies over to secure the German stuff really just makes it a tall order. So yeah, England sucks. So if you didn't know that, you know that now. Having said that, though, we do have to play them. So how do I like to go about playing them? Well, the way I think about it, I got three neighbors, I got France, I got Germany, and I got Russia. The number one concern, I think, is generally France, just because they got the best shot at your underbelly, but with control of the Mid-Atlantic and then access to North Atlantic, Irish Sea, English Channel. They got the best chance of getting a fleet in behind you, especially because unless you as England are going after France immediately, which is an option, but a difficult one, your natural initial path of expansion is going to be Norway, Benelux, East, leaving yourself vulnerable to France. Having said that, I don't generally like to push the London fleet south into English Channel, because then you're giving up your guaranteed gain of Norway. In a full press game, if I feel like I can get the jump on English Channel, and or that France is not communicating well and I don't feel confident about them, I do sometimes go for it. But that would also have to be combined with my feeling very good about Russia's communication. They're being really friendly and being like, okay, I'm not gonna contest you in Norway. Because in Gunboat, I have no way of knowing whether or not Russia's going to move their army north in the first turn. And English Channel isn't a vital area that you have to defend right away. Uh, it's not, you know, the way I think about Black Sea, whereas, like, if I'm either power, I'm sending my fleet into the Black Sea. I think it's it's usually common for both France and England to want to, to leave it open on the first turn, because France wants to move to mid-Atlantic and grab something in Iberia with the fleet, and England wants to go to North Sea in order to grab Norway. So especially in Gunboat, my feeling as England is you want to send the London fleet into North Sea and leave English Channel open. If I did London to English Channel here and I bounced France... Had I also invested, like, the army in Liverpool into Wales in order to try to convoy over, it's just a waste of time in the first year. France is a lot harder to attack as England than I think England is to attack as France. So then we go to Germany. Germany, I think, is a safer ally than France is for England. It's harder, I think, for Germany to attack England than I think it is for France to do so. Uh, mainly just because you are gonna have stuff in the North Sea as England, especially if you're not getting pressure anywhere else. So it's very hard for Germany to crack that, and it's very obvious when they're attempting to do so. Though I think it's easier for England to attack Germany than it is for England to attack France. So I feel like there's kind of like... Oh, and also, I think it's easier for Germany to attack France than it is for Germany to attack England. So I kind of think, now that I think about it, the Western Triple here is kind of like a clockwise circle of 
whom it's easier to attack. So England is easier for them to attack Germany, for whom it's easier to attack France, for whom it's easier to attack England. So I never really thought about it that way, but I think that's kind of true and interesting, the way that dynamic works. And then there's Russia, for whom they can really be a pain in trying to contest you over Scandinavia. But it can be very hard for them to make headway, so assuming Germany blocks them out of Sweden, then they got this fleet stuck in Bothnia in the second year. Uh, they're not going to be able to get it in Norway, so in that circumstance, they need to get something into Finland to get to attack against Sweden, and then only then will they be able to get to attack against Norway. So England definitely has the upper hand in Scandinavia, but if... Russia does get into Sweden in the first year, Germany lets them in, then they got to attack on Norway in the spring of 02, or if they get, you know, an army into Finland, then they got three. So, Russia can be very strong in Scandinavia, but it's hard for them to do so, and they also have a lot of southern stuff to worry about. So yeah, that's Russia. I mean, sometimes... You can play nice with them, and, you know, if they're attacking Germany, then that's usually a good thing for you. The Norway-St. Peter's thing usually gets awkward, so that can be kind of a difficulty in forming a positive relationship with them. But if you can block them out of St. Petersburg, take St. Petersburg, and kill all their fleets, they're basically done. In the Atlantic, there's the easiest power in the Atlantic to wipe out. So you're going to want to do that at some point to uh, secure your eastern flank if you're going for a solo and have a strong presence in the North Atlantic and stuff up here and stuff. So yeah, alright, let's go on to the moves. I go for the North Sea, Norwegian Sea move that gets me guaranteed access on Norway. What I do with the, the army in this combination... You can bring it to Edinburgh if you want some flexibility about which fleet uh, convoys the army. That can be important if, say, Russia does not move this army in Moscow north to St. Petersburg and you want the army to convoy via Norwegian Sea, leaving the North Sea fleet able to move of its own accord in either striking for Denmark, Holland, or Belgium. But I like bringing it to York just because I got security in case France does something like Brest English Channel, like he did here. I chose against doing the other alternative of fleet moves, London to English Channel, Edinburgh to North Sea, just because I have no reason to bet that I'll have an easy time cracking France, and I don't know whether or not I like Russia yet, because I can't talk to them, and I don't know that they're not going to do Moscow to St. Petersburg, so I want to play it safe and sure, I get the guaranteed gain of Norway in the first year. So, French moves. These are basically the opposite of the moves that I do when I play France. So, he's playing defensively with the armies and aggressively with the fleet, whereas I usually play aggressively with the armies and defensively with the fleet. I go Paris to Picardy, Marseille to Burgundy, rest to mid-Atlantic usually, especially in gunboats, because I'm more worried about Burgundy than I am about English Channel. Going back to like the circle of whom it's easier to attack that I kind of mentioned earlier, Germany, I think it's easier for them to attack France, so I definitely want to guard against Burgundy more than I do English Channel, because Burgundy is adjacent to two supply centers, whereas English Channel is only adjacent to one. Plus, it gives me a chance to take Belgium, if I can get both armies adjacent to it. So what these moves do, I mean, it allows him to take Iberia safely, provided that Italy doesn't go to Piedmont and Munich doesn't go to Burgundy, which in this case definitely paid off, and it also signals to Germany that you are intending to be friendly. So that's a thing, and then the English Channel Fleet signifies to England that you're not exactly going to be friendly. So, my moves are aggressive against Germany and kind of more passive against England, whereas these sets of French opening moves are more aggressive against England, which is bad for me, and 
friendlier to f Germany. So I think it's interesting to point out these moves. German moves are standard. He's going to Denmark, and he's going to have the ability to block Russia out of Sweden, which is definitely good for me. Russia does indeed choose to send the army north to contest in Scandinavia, so that's bad for me. I usually think I go south. Turkish moves are standard. Austrian moves are relatively standard. No bounce of Galicia is notable. Italian moves also standard and signifying friendship to Austria. So, second turn, follow one, I do indeed take Norway, because it's guaranteed, but Russia does try to block me. I guard London against the possibility that France would try to snatch it from under me. Germany does block Russia out of Sweden, and he forces his way into Holland instead of blocking France out of Belgium. France takes Belgium, takes Portugal and Spain, so France gets all three possible gains in the first year, and he gets three builds. So that's potentially dangerous. Italy grabs Tunis. Austria and Italy are best friends. Austria grabs Greece and Serbia. Russia forces his way into Romania, thus giving Turkey the Black Sea. So that's the first year. Adjustment 01. I build a fleet in Edinburgh. Reason for this is I only have two fleets here. I want to be able to defend my position in Norway and North Sea and potentially push if I can. I do sense that France is a threat, but I still have one army on home soil, and a fleet in Liverpool certainly isn't going to make any headway against France, and an army is unnecessary, as I already have one. France does indeed build a fleet in Brest, which I don't really blame him for, as he's got three builds, so one of these definitely has to be a fleet. But that's bad news for me. The other two builds, armies, as opposed to another fleet in Marseille, makes sense as his position in Belgium is really vulnerable right now, so I imagine he wants to push both of these armies up to defend Belgium against Germany. Germany builds an army and a fleet, though signaling that he either wants to try to break North Sea open by sending it to Legal Land Bight, or play for Sweden by throwing it into Baltic. So we got a lot of fleet competition for me. Only silver lining is that Russia builds his army in Warsaw as opposed to Moscow, signaling that he wants to play south, or at least defend south, as opposed to sending more resources north, like St. Petersburg to Finland, Moscow to St. Petersburg, something like that. Italy builds his fleet in Naples. Turkey builds his fleet in Smyrna. Kind of got the signal of a Russia-Turkey against an Italy-Austria here. All right, let's go then. Spring 02. So these French fleets here are definitely a threat to me. So I'm trying to play defensively here. North Sea to English Channel. Hoping that if Germany attacks Belgium here, that I'll be able to block this movement. Though, hedging my bet with London to Wales, thinking that, well, if France does get into English Channel, I can defend Wales, London, and North Sea by North Sea bouncing London with Wales here. Guarding three provinces with two units there. Um, and then with the other two units, just hitting Norway to bounce, not really expecting to get into it and using Edinburgh to come up to help defend my stuff here against Russia. But Russia supports me into Sweden, which is nice, and doesn't take Norway with St. Petersburg. So that's a good development. But we do have Germany sending his fleet into Baltic, looking like he's trying to play for Sweden. France does indeed get into English Channel, so I'm going to have to defend London here. France moves his armies up, hedging against a German attack on Burgundy by supporting the Marseille army up. But Germany ain't attacking him when he has a guaranteed attack on Belgium. So that is notable. Sending the Munich army to Silesia. A little aggressive against Russia, which is definitely good for me. As maybe I can count on Russian support to hold Sweden and Norway here against Germany. 
though he probably did it just because Russia built in Warsaw and didn't want to let him get into Silesia, thinking he would go there, but I don't really know why Russia would go there with just with one unit. It's not like it can do much. Germany can definitely guard everything, and he's probably more concerned about Austria, so, but yeah, Germany did it, so that's definitely good, though, so cool. So let's go to the fall. Here we see me hedging, playing very defensively, trying not to lose centers, and somewhat paying the price for it. I do bounce myself in London, preventing any French anything from getting through. Defending Norway against the possible Russian attack, and signaling friendship with Russia. Russia thankfully defending my position in Sweden here, but not giving any priority to defense of the North Sea leads France to support an attack from Belgium taking the North Sea. Germany signals friendship with France, making no attack on Belgium, though he is spooked enough by the French army in Burgundy that he moves his army in Silesia back to Munich. Russia is likewise spooked enough by the German army in Silesia that he moves his army back to Warsaw. Though good for me that Russia moves his army in St. Petersburg down to Livonia, Definitely feeling some pressure from Germany here, so he's moving defensively against Germany and supports my defense of Sweden, so thank you very much, Russia. Basically the same moves from Austria here, attacking Turkey, signaling friendship with Russia. So, 02, I gain Sweden, but lose the North Sea, which is tough. I retreat to Edinburgh. And I have the only build of the adjustment, so naturally I build a fleet in London, being surrounded by two French fleets here. But I'm still courting in my mind the possibility that these French attacks on North Sea are an attempt to get around Germany and maybe attack Holland or something. So I'm about to make a mistake that leaves myself really vulnerable to France and really changes the dynamic of the game. So, we go into Spring 01, and what we see is a French convoy from Belgium to York. He defends North Sea with English Channel, so he's got two on North Sea. I attack North Sea from Edinburgh with only London supporting. Wales supports London to hold, but I only have two attack against North Sea. Why? Because Norway decided to defend Sweden instead of supporting the attack from Edinburgh to North Sea. I did this because I don't trust Russia to defend it from Germany for me. And this bet really cost me here. Had I supported Edinburgh to North Sea from Norway and London, this convoy would have not gone through. This fleet would have been forced to retreat. It could have retreated to York Norwegian Sea, Heligoland, Bight, Skagerrak, and still have been annoying, but unable to attack Liverpool. An army in York now, a French army, is way more threatening than this fleet would have been. So I'm really on the back foot after this move. Germany continues to sit defensively on its border with France while continuing to try to take Sweden from me. Russia moves his army in Livonia back to St. Petersburg, adjacent to Norway, which is dangerous for me. Though, Russia has no ability to attack me right now, so that is good at least. But I'm definitely standing to lose a center here. France doesn't have a guaranteed attack against London, but Wales has to guess between guarding London and covering Liverpool, and... If France uses North Sea to attack London, supported by English Channel, I could use Edinburgh or Norway to support London to North Sea, and that would block that. But if he did anything other than that, like York or English Channel to London, supported by the other one, then I'm screwed. So, though it's not guaranteed, I'm in a really tough spot, and the bets are against me right now. So throughout the last few moves, France has continuously prioritized the positional move, taking advantage of my conservativeness in guarding against the more obvious attack, in gaining a position on me, and now he's in a good spot to strike 
and really screw up my game here and take some of my home centers. So let's see what happens. Fall 03. France does indeed take London. I think what I was intending to do with these set of moves by moving Wales back to Liverpool, forcing North Sea kind of with two attack, is basically giving up London and trying to form uh, a new defense between Liverpool, York, and North Sea here. Like, basically forsaking London and trying to stop the bleeding. So I think that was my plan. I'm not sure if these were the best moves, but, well, they weren't the best moves that got me in this situation. So, yeah, that's the situation. On the very bright side, though... Germany has decided to use this opportunity, now that these French fleets are clearly occupied, to force Belgium, and with his fleets, he's moving them away from Sweden, Heligoland Bight, and Denmark here, while I've finally decided to rely on Russia's help to defend Sweden. So while I've lost London, uh, Germany is now attacking France, so that's good. Meanwhile, apparently I missed mentioning that Italy and Austria were combining against an attack on Turkey here. So yeah, we see Russia, Turkey defending largely against the attacking Italy and Austria. So that's 03. I lose a center. I'm down to 4. Uh, Germany gains a center. They're up to 6. France stays even at 6 because while they take London, they lose Belgium. And that's the change of hands. I retreat my fleet in London to York now that it's open since France moved the army to Wales to cut the presumed support of um, this Liverpool army for London. And France retreats to Picardy. In the adjustment, I gotta burn something because I have five units and I need to go down to four. I decide to burn the North Sea fleet, which... The reason for being is to basically invite Germany, saying, well, there are two French fleets here, you got two fleets adjacent to the North Sea, that is your responsibility now. I choose to do this over giving up, say, the Swedish fleet, because if I feel like if I give this up, then I've lost Norway and Sweden. I want to maintain this stuff, I feel like I can only defend and hold hope to hold out over here and make a counterattack. if I'm holding on to this stuff. If I've lost this stuff, then it really doesn't matter if I can even gain London back. I'll, I'm down to three at that point, if I can even take it, and I'm in a very bad spot. So I'm giving up North Sea, saying Germany take it, hoping that I can hold on to these two centers with just the one fleet. Good news is Germany builds an army, so... He's not building another fleet, which is going to really clog up here. He's going after France, so he get, builds an army. Turkey down here had to delete this fleet, so he rebuilds it. He's defensively vulnerable on Bulgaria here. If Austria and Italy combined against Bulgaria here, they should take that. So Italy and Austria look like they're about to expand against Russia Turkey down here, while Russia's not committing all their forces. So... Hopefully, if I want to hold on to this stuff, they will. So, let's go to Spring 04. It is now a full-on war between France and Germany, and I'm just kind of stuck in the middle on Germany's side. So, my play right now needs to be trying to retake London. If I'm going to retake London, I need to first get into Wales. I can't really get into North Sea, because I've kind of given that to Germany. That's Germany's problem to deal with now, so I'm going to need to need to take it from the west side, so I'm going to need to get into Wales. I can't get into Wales now because I can't make an attack on it because this York fleet right now doesn't touch it. I have one unit that's able to attack Wales, and that's this Liverpool army. I think I make a mistake by defending York here with Liverpool. I'm correctly using this Edinburgh fleet to get to Clyde to try to get around to get a second unit adjacent to Wales. Uh, what I think I should have done here was just rotate, keep rotating this. York to Edinburgh following up, and then this Liverpool army to York. If I lose Liverpool in the process, I should be able to take it back, I guess theoretically, 
I might not be able to if some if they got a, another unit in Wales here. Um, but yeah, I think I need to be more proactive here. But yeah, so I move Sweden to Norway, defending against the possible Saint Petersburg to Norway here. Though that would have left open the possibility of you know. St. Petersburg holds, Bothnia goes to Sweden, then they support each other, and I lose both of these in one year. So that would have sucked. And honestly, if I was Russia, that's probably what I would have done, as opposed to definitely not just sitting here. Either pull these south, but why pull these south when they're in such a great position to take these two? If I was Russia here, I definitely would have attacked. But, um, yeah... Now in the fall, there's no guaranteed attack against Sweden or Norway because they don't, they're not both adjacent to anything. But that's that. Uh, Germany does indeed take North Sea. Seeing it open, doesn't want to let France get into it, so they force it. Uh, York here, maybe that's why York held, because I wanted to support Germany in. Meanwhile, Germany makes a positional play on France taking Burgundy from Belgium while giving up Belgium in the process, but they should be able to retake Belgium in the fall here. So, France has been broken into, and Germany is on the attack, so that's good. Meanwhile, Austria breaks into Romania in the east, while Italy is looking to support Austria into Bulgaria, which which I think Italy should really be looking to gain something for themselves at this point. But regardless, they're making headway. So let's go to the fall. France retreats the army in Burgundy to Picardy, while Russia retreats his army in Romania to Ukraine. Fall of 04, I am rotating Liverpool back to Edinburgh, bringing the fleet down from Clyde to Liverpool. So this is going to take a while, because now this army needs to get into York, though I try to attack London from York, that might not have been intended to get through, but I'm definitely at least cutting support in case English Channel went to North Sea, but in this case, English Channel supports London to North Sea, taking it from Germany, while Wales covers London. I'm really lucky here, I think, in that Russia bounced me in Sweden, attempted to take Sweden off of me, which, combined with my army move to Edinburgh, left Germany no centers of mind to retreat into. So, I kind of dodged a bullet there, I feel like. Meanwhile, France plays it really risky and leaving Paris open, and Germany bets that he'll just walk into Paris, and he does. I'm not a big fan of this French move here, supporting Marseille to Burgundy. Like, even had this succeeded, letting Germany into Gascony is just asking for trouble. So Germany's, despite with the rest of his armies playing extremely defensively against this Russian fleet in Baltic, the fleet and the Ruhr army combining to defend Kiel and the f army in Munich defending Berlin... He gains an incredible position on France here, so Germany is in a really good spot despite losing North Sea and Belgium. Meanwhile, Russia and Turkey fail to coordinate on a counterattack on Romania, while Italy and Austria fail to coordinate an attack on Bulgaria. Italy is again offering Austria's support to Bulgaria, which is just, in my opinion, asking for trouble, though at least he does have these two armies back in Italy defending against any possible Austrian attack when Austria theoretically gets his two builds right here. So let's go see the retreats. Germany retreats the fleet into Legal and Bight, makes sense, and builds. Germany, France, and I are all even. Russia is forced to burn something, so good news for us, Germany and me, that he burns this Baltic fleet, because he's getting pressed hard by Austria. Austria builds another army, signaling further friendship with Italy. Let's go to 05 now. I am able to gain a position 
on London by taking Wales, guessing that France is going to use this army in Wales to defend London, not attacking London, letting the army move into London, and then moving the fleet up into Wales. So that's good for me. Moving the army in Edinburgh up to Liverpool, supporting with both of my fleets either German fleet into North Sea. So York, def York supports the Heligoland one, and Norway supports the Denmark one, ensuring that no matter what, one of those is getting in. <laughs> so, unless Wales attacked York, but that's probably not going to happen. So, North Sea is dislodged and forced to retreat. It'll retreat to Edinburgh, obviously, but I should be able to counter that guaranteed, I think. But we'll see. Um... Now that Germany's got an army behind French lines in Paris, France goes full-on withdraw, pulling both armies back, while Germany moves the army into Picardy, should have a pretty good attack against Belgium this year, while Russia has now given up on doing anything up north with the two units, moves the St. Petersburg army south to try to do something against Austria down here, but Austria's moving up and getting the angle on Galicia, so they're going to keep advancing. Uh, meanwhile, Italy finally accepts the idea that he might like to get something out of this alliance with Austria, so accepts Austrian support into Bulgaria, though this fleet in Constantinople might be a problem for Ionian down the road if Eastern Med does not cover it. So, let's see, let's go into the retreat, yeah, he does retreat to Edinburgh. Yeah, this is a guaranteed attack, assuming Germany doesn't do any shenanigans. Wales cuts any support that London might give. Uh, these two units kick the French fleet out of Edinburgh. Meanwhile, Germany has a guaranteed attack on Belgium by cutting English Channel support. He also destroys the army in Belgium. France guarantees that he takes Paris, but in the meantime loses Burgundy to Germany. So Germany's still got a great position on France here. While Austria moves up in position against Russia by taking Galicia, Italy lets Turkey get in behind him into Ionian, so that's interesting, but he does have a fleet he does have a fleet build. So Turkey and Russia are in a bad spot. But Germany is looking progressively stronger against France here, and I'm able to hold my position in Edinburgh and gain a position against London here by taking Wales. So, a good year for me. I've secured my position in Scandinavia against Russian attacks. Germany's not committing to attack me there and is fully committing against France. So I'm alive right now. So that's, that's good. So... In the retreat, France chooses to burn the fleet in Edinburgh, which is really good for me. He is no doubt doing it because if he burns this fleet, he'll have the ability to rebuild it in Marseille. Because he's definitely in a weak position against Germany here and needs more armies down here to hold the front. So thanks to my ability to not lose anything in Scandinavia, Germany's successful attack against France that has relieved the pressure on me, I'm able to now be in a good position, potentially next year, to retake London. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 1905 adjustment. France does indeed rebuild an army in Marseille. He's trying to guard his rear, while Italy builds a fleet in Naples to deal with this uh, Turkish fleet in Ionian, and Turkey burns his army in Armenia. So, spring 1906, I advance the army in Liverpool to York. It should be able to coordinate with Wales for an attack against London in the fall. Meanwhile, Wales supports the German unit in North Sea to English Channel. I correctly guess that Germany would take that support. But I send Norway in for a bounce of North Sea behind it. So, I'm willing to support the German unit out of North Sea into English Channel, but I'm not really willing to allow the follow-up German fleet into North Sea, and that's because, well, now I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to get into London, and Germany's on the warpath against France and kicking ass. If I can take London back, 
I'm probably not going to pursue France. I'm probably going to pursue Germany. And I don't want a German fleet in North Sea any longer than it needs to be. So, this attack does succeed and kicks this French fleet in English Channel out of English Channel. Um, it was trying to convoy London to Picardy. And had I not supported this attack, uh, this attack against Picardy would have succeeded. It would have destroyed this German army here in Picardy. So, France would have been sitting pretty good if this attack had gone through, at least vis-a-vis -vis Germany. I, I would have been able to retake London regardless, but France would be in a better position on the continent. Right now, Germany does have a stronger position relative to France with this attack here. He doesn't have a guaranteed attack against Brest or Paris, but he has good opportunities, good guesses for it. Um, this move he did actually right here, supporting Rohr to Burgundy with Picardy, I think there's probably something he could have done better than this. I mean, the odds Picardy needs to support Rohr here for Rohr to get through I think are pretty low because I think it's pretty low odds Burgundy's getting into Gascony in the first place. If Picardy attacked Paris here with Burgundian support, that would have absolutely been devastating. So, I don't think this Picardy move is great, but Germany is still in a really strong position against France going into the fall, and I definitely have London back here. And North Sea is now empty, so that's really good. Plus, I got St. Petersburg right here whenever I whenever I want it. So, elsewhere, Turkey actually had an opportunity to take Tunis here, but I suppose he was guarding against the possibility that Italy would do Naples to Tyranian combined with Eastern Med to Ionian. That way he'd be able to just take Tunis freely in the fall, and if he didn't do this in response to that potential move, he'd just be kicked out. But... In this situation, Italy can now guard everything. Italy also supports the Austrian fleet in Greece forward. So so that's the spring of 06. In the retreat, the French fleet retreats to mid-Atlantic. In the fall, I retake London, supporting Wales in to London, while the French army in London signifies in its last dying breath that it wants to be friends with me. I understand and agree. I support my fleet in Edinburgh into North Sea. Combined with these two fleets, I'm now in a decent position to be able to start attacking Germany. Meanwhile, Germany fails to capitalize on his good position against France this year and fails to take anything. This is a guessing match over here. Germany tries to support Burgundy into Paris with Picardy, but Picardy's support is cut by Brest, while English Channel tries to cut Brest's support. Had English Channel supported Picardy into Brest with Burgundy attacking Paris, or had Picardy attacked Paris with Burgundian support, Germany would have been able to take something, but this is... Again, just a guessing game here. So France successfully is able to guess correctly and stop Germany in their tracks. Meanwhile, in the east, Italy and Austria continue to advance against Turkey and Russia. Italy gets into Smyrna, supported by Austria, while Austria continues to advance on Russia, this time flanking into Silesia. So that's 1906. The Austrian unit in Galicia is forced back from a Russian attack and it falls back to Vienna, but this should not um, delay Austrian progress while Turkey destroys their fleet in Smyrna. They only have two units left, so they're in a tough spot. Adjustment 1906. I build a fleet in Edinburgh, clearly signifying that I intend to attack Germany here, which I'm doing because, well, France is on the back foot. They only have one fleet. They're not really able to attack me. And uh, Germany's kind of in the way if I intended to attack France. It'd be a little hard to get, you know, into mid-Atlantic when there's a German fleet blocking my way in English Channel right here. Um, 
That, and, well, Germany's more of a threat against me. They got two fleets, France only has one, and uh, I'm going to have a lot easier time of getting behind Germany, because uh, most of their f units are advanced in France, so I got a nice, easy back door right here. So that's what I'm doing. France builds another army, so, again, solidifying anti-German. Um, Italy builds a fleet, which I can understand. He's not really in a position to get rid of this Turkish fleet in Ionian. Even if he takes Constantinople right here, he's going to have a tough time breaking Ankara, so he can't really destroy this just by taking Turkish stuff. Would have loved to see an army, though, just because I think, you know, now's a great opportunity for Italy to stab Austria, what with all Russian units converged on Romania to attack Austria here. But, uh, yeah... Spring 1907, here comes my attack, so, position, I can easily get into Skagerrak, I can get into Sweden, so I can have two units adjacent to Denmark here, also moving into North Sea, because North Sea, uh, even York is just signifying via a, a fake convoy that I didn't order that, you know, in case Germany and France you guys didn't notice, I'm going after Germany. Um... Germany convoys Picardy to Wales, which is beautiful. The second invasion of the British Isles. The first one by France, the second one by Germany. So, he has an attack against London or Liverpool right here. Uh, I can defend only one of them, so we'll see what happens. But I've got a guaranteed attack against Denmark, so we will see. France, meanwhile, takes over Germany's position in Picardy. He now has four units adjacent to Burgundy. Germany only has three units in and adjacent to, so France should be able to retake Burgundy this turn. In the east, Russia does have a guaranteed attack against Romania here. Austria only has three defenders, while Russia has four attackers. But Russia chooses not to go for it. He is more worried about losing Warsaw. So, supports himself back into Warsaw and loses Galicia in the process. Austria now has a guaranteed attack against Warsaw in the fall, with Romania attacking Ukraine and Silesia and Galicia coordinating against Warsaw. So, unfortunate to see. Though, gaining Romania, destroying the Austrian f army there... You do lose Warsaw in the process, but I definitely think that's more attractive, as you can, you know, you can defend Romania with only two units and then be able to still cover Moscow. I think that's better. Puts more pressure on them. Italy, a little boring. Not excited to see three units doing nothing. I think if you wanted to attack Austria, now is a great opportunity. Um, but you got Constantinople, so... Congrats. Just would have liked to see more. Spoiler alert, this alliance never ends, which is rather boring in my opinion, but spring's pretty exciting. Got a successful attack going, so place your bets to see whether or not I will lose anything to Germany in the fall. Retreat, only one is Constantinople retreats to Ankara. It should be fine for now. Fall 1907. Nope. I correctly guess that these two German units here will coordinate against London. Um, I leave Liverpool open, and I support the defense of London, and I'm good. I also take Denmark, which was guaranteed to me, and North Sea walks into Holland, which was undefended. So, I am plus two now, and sitting pretty. France retakes Burgundy. Moves Brest to Mid-Atlantic, just because he's probably worried about uh, the German fleet going there. And Austria does do the guaranteed attack on Warsaw, but thankfully Russia takes Romania in the process. Italy moves his stuff up, going to kill the rest of Turkey and not stab Austria. Boring. Retreats. There's a lot of retreats. You see the retreats. Adjustment 1907, Germany burns the army in Wales and the fleet in English Channel, so thus ends the second invasion of the British Isles. England has once again thrown the invaders back into the sea. 
I build a fleet in Edinburgh and an army in Liverpool. The army's gotta be there just to throw out the invaders in case they didn't leave willingly, but also at the same time I got one, two, three, four, five fleets now. I could use some more armies because you eventually do need those if you wanna push too far inland. Um, Italy builds another fleet, so they're not attacking Austria, which is lame. And spring, 1908. I'm bouncing France out of English Channel because I remember what happened the last time I let them in there. But at the same time, if I could get behind uh, France and kick both of these guys' butts, I'd love to do that. Um, but yeah, the main event is trying to keep kicking German butt. So, moving the fleet up, I get kicked out of Holland, but I should be able to take something back here with the combined... North Sea, Illegal Land by Denmark, Baltic. It's a heck of a, a heck of an armada raid against the Germans here. Um, both armies still in Britain though, so they gotta they gotta go for a swim. Uh, meanwhile, Germany does indeed kick me out of Holland, and France walks up right behind them into Belgium. So France has got Belgium back, so they're gonna get a fleet build this year, probably over there. Um, Italy's still advancing towards the Black Sea and stuff for reasons, while Austria's killing Russia. Russia decides to forsake Romania and put Turkey out of his misery by taking Ankara, which is a mistake, but really, I mean, if these two aren't going to do anything against each other, he's kind of screwed no matter what, so... Um, yeah, Romania's destroyed because it's cut off here. He could have done a better move, but unless these two attack each other, Russia's kind of screwed. So, retreat. Yeah, I do retreat to Heligoland and rip Turkey. Fall 1908. I put three attack against Kiel, cutting support via a convoy to Holland. Uh, this ain't guaranteed, but... Given what France did by attacking Ruhr, it is guaranteed. So I have Kiel while I lose Holland, so that's a wash for me. Uh, Austria just sneaks into Berlin. Austria likewise gets into Ukraine, takes Romania this year, so they're going to keep gobbling up Russia. Italy gives a nice convoy from Naples all the way to Constantinople, but they'll have to do a maneuver in the springtime of next year in order to get an angle on Ankara. The onus is really on Italy here, in my opinion, to attack Austria. Austria obviously isn't going to do it. Uh, not at least until they've secured all of Russia, at which time they can build some fleets and turn around. But they're not going to be able to build a fleet if they're occupying Trieste with an army here. So that's unfortunate to see. So, 1908, France gains Belgium. I lose Holland, but gain Kiel. Austria gains Romania. And Turkey's dead. Oh, and Austria gains Berlin, too. So, adjustment. France builds a fleet because we've been jockeying for English Channel for a while. Austria builds two more juicy armies right here, while Russia has a replacement for losing Romania since he took Ankara. But it's not going to be enough. But at this point, even though France and I are going to keep jockeying over English Channel, I think we're both seeing that Italy and Austria are going to be best friends forever for some reason. So we're going to have to start thinking about, you know, holding stalemate lines. I'm basically on it already. All i got to do is kick him out of Berlin, and I can hold him off here. Um, but France has got to worry about the South. So that's a thing that we're going to deal with. Spring 1909, I give up on taking English Channel because I gotta get these armies doing things. Convoying it over to Denmark while I grab Berlin because Austria, get out of here. What are you doing? This is my shtick. Um, France takes Munich, so Germany's basically done except for Holland. Austria continues to advance against Russia here and starts making plays for the stalemate line on Munich. Retreats. These two armies kill each other. Austria and Berlin goes to Prussia, while a Russian Sebastopol goes back to Moscow. 
Fall 1909, once France has gotten into English Channel, he uses it to tell me how much he loves me by supporting my defense of North Sea while I'm trying to be like, give me that back. But he says no. In response, France tries to take Holland, and I'm like, no, you can't have that. I support the German units hold there, so Germany gets to survive another year. Doing this on the offhand chance that Italy and Austria fight each other, in which case I'd feel free to fight France. Uh, but Italy is using his fleets to go west, so looking like, nope, he's not going to fight Austria, he's just going to go straight for France, which is extremely boring and unfortunate. And also bad, so if you're Italy and you're watching this, you should feel bad, because you're bad. No, I'm just kidding. But for real, though, it's bad, but that's fine. But France and I now possess the stalemate line in Germany. I got Berlin. I'm not going to lose Berlin. I got Kiel. I'm not going to lose Kiel, except to France. And France has Munich. I'm trying to assist Russia here all I can, but this attack on Prussia doesn't do anything. So that's 1909. Retreats happen. Adjustment 1909, I need more armies. France is like, okay, I need fleets because Italy's coming. Russia's steadily losing things. And it's at this point that I stop trying to take English Channel, and France goes south to deal with Italy. France is nice to me and says, you can have Holland, but I don't take it. I'm just convoying my army to Norway, going to take St. Petersburg, kick Russia out, and then draw this. I jokingly offer to convoy my army from Wales to North Africa, kind of signaling what I want France to do here, and he's doing it. Um, I'm probably giving up Holland to him, because maybe I think France needs more stuff to be able to defend not only the stalemate line down here, but Munich, because he does need three units here. But yeah, Austria continues to advance against Russia, and Italy is moving on France, so it does look like this is just going to be a very boring static endgame where neither side, neither Italy or Austria are going to be willing to attack each other, and as a result, neither myself or France can attack each other, so it's just going to be a deadlock, and that's basically it. So, that is what happens, so now I'm just going to speed up through the rest of all the turns and show you what happened without really giving my commentary, because no more commentary is really needed. So, fall, Russia manages not to lose Moscow, but I take St. Petersburg, because, yeah. Russia's got only Moscow left. Russia's lost Moscow. The Austrian armies are on the stalemate line, but they can't break our stalemate line. France is actually kind of able to crack it in Turanian, but I don't feel safe in attacking France because I'm afraid that if I do, then, you know, France pulls back so far that Italy is able to pursue them all the way to the ends of the earth, while Austria is able to then just kind of snack on the rest of Italy and get so far past the stalemate line that... Austria now has a chance to win, though. Maybe I should have done something, because it's not like Austria has fleets. Regardless. Here's 1912. France is making progress, kind of. Austria is banging against the stalemate line. France has got Tunis. France misses a turn, which kind of loses him Tyrannian, and with that, any chance of being able to push into Piedmont. He also loses Munich, but that doesn't matter because it's still a stalemate line. Austria can't advance past that. France is back. Italy got into Western Med, which spooked me a bit. 
I brought my fleets down as a result. And that's it. At this point, we declared a draw. So, I don't know if I could have been able to attack France. I mean, I feel like if I did, then Austria would have been able to break the stalemate line in Ruhr or something, being able to outflank Berlin, grab that, and then... I mean, if he was able to take Holland, Belgium, or Burgundy, then he's in a really dominant position. But, I mean, if he doesn't, then he needs Tunis, which he can only get with fleets... So, I mean, it would have delayed the game by a good frickin' ten years or something. And I didn't really want to risk ruining the stalemate that France and I had constructed for ourselves. So I did decide to take the 25% and accept the draw. So, I mean, I thought it was a really interesting game up until, you know, the point where France and I killed Germany and then found ourselves up against an Italy and Austria that were best buddies for life. Um, France had me screwed. I feel like the only reason I was able to survive was because Russia did not capitalize on my weakness, which, were I in Russia's position there, I feel like I'm snacking on Sweden and Norway all day long. Because what's better than having two Russian units in the Baltic and St. Petersburg doing nothing and maybe supporting um, a foreign power because you're worried about Germany is taking the sentence for yourself and building more units because you're worried about Germany. So, I feel like Russia really kind of should have screwed me there, and he kind of did try, but he only half-heartedly tried, and I was lucky enough to be able to bounce him when he did try. But I think it was that extra unit that I had supplied myself there, which really helped a lot, combined with assisting Germany into English Channel that really swung the balance. Like, I would have been able to help Germany swing the balance even without those two Scandinavian centers, and I probably would have been able to retake London, but at that point I'm sitting at three instead of sitting at five, and Russia's got two or three fleets in Scandinavia and is a major force to be reckoned with. So... I feel like being able to kick France out as well as maintain my position in Scandinavia was, was what allowed me to survive there. And then beating Germany back wasn't all that hard, but I thought it was interesting to say that I was able to survive both a French invasion, who totally got the better of me, and a half-hearted German invasion that kind of ended right as it began. So, that was my game as England. It was rather quicker bit duller one, but nonetheless, it had some fun stuff in it, so thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, see you in the next one, I'm gonna do one as France, this one has a, the next one I have as France has a really extended middle game, which I think is pretty exciting, it hasn't technically ended yet, but it's basically about to end, and yeah, it goes on for a good number of years, and the middle game is pretty exciting, it's got a lot of swings in it. So stay tuned for that one. Until then, see ya.